Lord, we thank you for giving us this time together. We thank you for the opportunity you give us to look in the Word. We pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us and instruct us, that you would continue to guide our hearts and lives, that we would bring you glory, but that we would have teachable spirits to receive from you, and that you could instruct us and apply your Word to our life, and that we could see and know you in a greater way. So we thank you for this time in your word and ask that your hand be upon it in Jesus name. Amen. We're in 1 Peter chapter 1 as we continue our study. We just started the book. Peter is encouraging the scattered saints of God. Remember there was a lot of issues in Rome, especially with Nero coming in and he was the emperor of Rome and he burned the city and he blamed the Christians. And then he persecuted and chased after the Christians, and many of them were scattered to other areas uh, to live out their life. Strange areas, areas that were not according to their customs and traditions, areas that continued to influence their life with different practices and culture and worship of strange gods. And Peter is encouraging them that through this time there may be some sufferings, persecutions, but but God's going to use those things. And there's a purpose and a plan at the end of it. And to give the people hope, and our hope is always in Jesus Christ. And so he was encouraging them in these things. And we're going to pick it up where we left off. And we left off in verse 9, so we'll pick it up in verse 10 of 1 Peter chapter 1. It says, Of which salvation the prophets have even um, inquired... And search diligently, or have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven even which things the angels to de- desire to look into. I'm going to read it in another translation just to uh, have you hear it in another translation. It says, this salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about the gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory after. And then in verse 12, and they were told that their message were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preach in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. As we read those verses, we see that the Old Testament prophets were a little confused, and we understand that when Christ walked the earth that they were a little confused in their heart. And based on Scripture, they really believed that when Messiah would come, that he would renew the kingdom. He would set up his kingdom. That he would basically free them from the Roman occupation and set them back into the glory days that they had under Solomon. That here they thought that this was the action and the purpose of Messiah. And when things took a turn for the worse, and the Jewish leaders had turned on Christ and wouldn't receive him and and had plotted to have him executed, and there was this scattering that Jesus preached about would take place among the disciples, and the suffering he would have to endure at the cross, many of the people, they gave up. They, they turned from following him. Though that in their own scriptures, they would read passages about Messiah and Messiah having to suffer. 
Isaiah 53 is one example. They would see that, but they got confused in their heart. They didn't understand it. They couldn't understand how suffering went along with glory. How, how going through these difficult times, and how could that relate to an established kingdom ruled by the Lord? And they were wondering, what is going on? We, don't, we, don't, we can't tie the two together. And so they got discouraged, and many of them, the Scripture says, they fell away from the faith. They stopped, basically, they stopped following Jesus. And Jesus said to his few, will you also depart from me? And Peter said, where else would we go? Who else has the words of eternal life? We're, we're going to stay following you no matter what we have to go through. And as we said, even Peter went through a lot in his own life. But there he continued on, and the Lord prayed for him, and he became a fisher of men, and many got saved through the working of the Spirit in his life. But at first, they didn't get it. And there's a lot of us sometimes that we go through very similar things. We get hit with hard situations in life, difficult times. We get hit with trials or sufferings or, or discouragement. And we wonder, Lord, why? What, what is this all about? I don't get it. I've been trying to follow you. I, I thought I was doing right. I thought I was being led by your spirit and the things I was doing. And then I hit against some brick walls and some barriers and times of discouragement and, and seasons of dryness. And I don't understand why. And it's only until after that we get the understanding. And it may only be until we stand before the risen Lord in glory that we understand that he has used those things to prepare us for glory. But while we're going through it, we, we don't really get it. I remember Kathy and I were attending a church, and we really loved the church, but we felt that maybe God would have us to do something a little closer to home. So we tried another church, and we were there, and it, there wasn't the, the teaching. In fact, there was some error in the teaching, and there were some struggles, and it was a dry well that we were trying to draw from. And after a while, we realized that, you know, I, we need to go back. We need to get under, you know, the Word of God and I didn't really understand this period of time, this season that we were apart. And I remember going to, back to the church, and I talked to my pastor, and I said, Bill, we, we're just going to come back and you know, sit under the Word. We, we just don't understand what that season was. And he said something very profound to me. He said, Kirk, sometimes the Lord allows us or takes us through things to teach us what not to do. And I'm like, what not to do. And I didn't really get it until later when the Lord called me into the ministry and I realized that some of the things that I saw, I didn't want to have them practiced in the church. I didn't want to have them practiced among believers in, in my fellowship with one another. That I realized some of the things that may have been missing that I wanted to bring forth in my relations with, uh, with other brothers and sisters. But it wasn't at the time that I understood those, it was afterwards. And there's a lot of times we go through things, and maybe currently going through things, and we just scratch our head wondering, what's going on? I, I, I don't get it. I'm really trying to serve the Lord, but the enemy seems to be battling, battling my life, battling my friendships, my family, battling my mind. And we're like, why the battles? And yet faith has to walk me through and realize that though we have to suffer, and it, and it declares this back in verse 7 pretty much, if you remember it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth through the fire, uh, or the, uh, through, though it be tried, I'm sorry, um, perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found under the praise and honor and the glory at the appearing of Christ. That I have to walk by faith and realize that, Lord, whatever this season is, whatever that season was, whatever the situation that's, that's upon me, I realize that at, at the end of it, 
or, or on the other side of it, the glory is going to be seen. And the Jews were struggling. They, they read about the suffering Savior, but they, they didn't know how that went with, with a reigning king. And, and they couldn't put the two together. And so they kind of focused only on the reigning king and, and the deliverance from, you know, having, having our own land and, and return to the glory days and all the things. And so when Jesus came and it, and it seemed to be turning in a different direction and he was going to have to suffer, they, they, they left. They stopped following him. And I'm just here to encourage you, the two do to go together. That, that there can be some hard things and some battles, but, but the glory is up ahead. And so we don't lose sight of that. Because I can tell you, there's many times I've scratched my head. So, Lord, I, I don't get it. But by faith, I ask that you take my foot and put it out in front of me. And then you take my other foot and put it out in front of that. And you help me to keep going forward because my faith is still in you and I trust that, that your glory will be either seen in and through my life or be established in some way by what I'm walking through. And so it, it kind of helps to, to change that perspective and, and have a, a different outlook that, that is not so nearsighted on my current situation in fact, verse 13, if you read verse 13, it says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, hope to the end, for the revelation of Jesus Christ, or hope for, to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I got so many notes I write in my Bible all the time that it's hard to see the words. But it says, in another version that I want to read, it says, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. That I put all my hope in the things that lie up ahead when Christ returns. That, that basically, as I look at the situation and realize that sometimes I get tripped up when, when an explosive trial hits my life or when uh, Satan is there really trying to hammer me with, with thought or temptation. And, and during that time, if I'm focused on those things, it, it discourages me. It, 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 it kind of, you know, it, it, it makes me try to, it tries to make me stumble in my faith. And the Lord keeps telling me, Kirk, look to the finish line of your faith. Stop looking at the current situation. Look ahead of it. You've got to look at the finish line of your faith. When I appear, when, I, when you stand with me in glory, and I'm trying to, more than ever, to look further than the current situation that I'm going through, whether that current situation is suffering, a hard time, a trial, a discouragement, a temptation, I want to look past that. I want to realize that my life does not consist of what's right before me, but it's what's up ahead that God has for me. I, I, I want to I wanna look forward. I, I want to set goals that go beyond this current situation. I, I, I want to be able to make, you know, certain choices and, and work to something that's beyond the current moment. I, I don't want the current situation to define me. I want to work towards something up ahead. Well, let me give you an example, a, a little example. About 40 years ago, I met Kathy. Everyone looks over to Kathy, you know. I met Kathy. <laughs> 
And, and let me tell you this. I mean, she really wanted me. I mean, or maybe it was reversed. Maybe I really wanted her, you know. Maybe it was the other way around. And I realized that, man, I got to set some goals here. I got to spend time with her. I, I, I got to spend extra time with her. I, I would have to take walks with her. And, and she loved when we were, you know, first young in the church, they did a lot of echoing chorus songs. Now, singing is not my thing, and no one wants me to solo, do a solo for them. But I would do the echo part of the chorus. I would do the lead part, and she would echo. And, and I would take walks and sing and do echo songs, you know. And then I got really crazy, and, and I'm like, man, I, I really want this. This is a goal, man. I'm, I'm out to, to get her. And so I would buy her these 10 to 12-inch, you know, like stuffed animals, like a teddy bear or something. And I would put it in a gift box, and then I would buy a nice gold or silver necklace and put it around the bear. And then I would have on the side of the bear either a rose or a little heart-shaped box of chocolate. Chocolate always works. Heart-shaped box of chocolate. Then I would put a lid on it, and then I would have her open it just right so she got the full effect, you know. And, and I'm like... Where did that come from? You know, that romantic side, you know, I didn't know it was in there. You know, I like playing football with the guys and doing things that I like to do, but all of a sudden, you know, I wanted, I, I set a goal and I, I wanted to get her and I got her. But the key thing that I've learned is now that I got her, I want to keep her, you know? So I still have goals. I still want to spend time and have fun and do crazy things and, and be in the Word together and grow in the Lord together and continue the relationship. And so if you really want something, you're going to set a goal. Whatever that means, if you want a, a car or a house, you, you plan for that. You set goals. You, you make right choices. You... You avoid spending, you know, foolishly so that you can obtain that goal. Well, I have a goal in my life, and the goal is I want to cross the finish line of faith. And I want to cross over well. I, I, I want to, to live a, a life, as I've shared many times, where I hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. I, I want to cross over that finish line of faith. But it's not just going to happen. But that has to be my goal. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things the enemy is doing and has done over the years to try to take that away or take me out or to get me short-sighted of the current events and situations and discouragements and temptations where I would throw it all in for the current moment on what God has for me. And I don't want to do that. And so Peter's saying, you're going to go through some hard times, some struggles, some difficulties. But you've got to have a goal out there. So gird up your loins, strengthen your mind for action, exercise self-control, and put your hope, all your hope, in the gracious salvation of the Lord that he's going to give you all the blessings and promises that will be fulfilled that is coming. And so now I, I need to constantly lift my eyes up off the current situation. And he's encouraging them because, remember, these believers were under great persecution because of Nero, the Roman Empire. Great persecution. I, I, no matter where they went to, Rome extended you know, into the far reaches that they were under great persecution as believers. And they had to lift their eyes off the current situation and the current, you know, uh, attacks of the enemy or even the current desires that they have for their life and go long-term and realize, and now I'm going long-term in this. I, I, I really want to focus my heart 
I'm finishing. I'm crossing that line. In fact, in Philippians 3, verse 14, it says, I press on toward the goal or the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That I, I, I press for something further up ahead than the current situation. The enemy always tries to take us out by the current situation. By, by the, the current problem or need or struggle or desire. The current temptation. Whatever that situation is, Satan's trying to sift us and shake our faith discourage us he couldn't stop you from getting saved but he sure doesn't want you to reach the finish line and hear well done and so i need to set my eyes up ahead because that's where i want to be i want to finish there for that season i set my eyes on one thing i'm going to get kathy to marry me and she did. And then we've had other goals in life. I'm going to, you know, we want a house, we want a car, we want whatever. And you, you have to work toward that planet. It, it, it doesn't just happen. We've got to save for that. And it's the same thing in the faith. I, I need to set the goal and the mark and the high calling that I want to be more like Jesus. Now, it's, it's the process that, that, that takes place. It, it, it's relying on the Holy Spirit of God. It, it, it's understanding that it's through the work of my Savior and, and what he's already done for me at the cross. But man, I don't want to be short-sighted. I want to be long-term. I, I, I want to look up ahead. And a lot of times, the short-sighted things have tripped up many of my brothers and sisters that I've seen over the years. And I want to encourage you and myself, man, let's look long-term. Let's, let's look up ahead. That We'll all cross the finish line of faith. But here, it, it encourages, and Peter's encouraging the saints that you, you, you need to go past your current suffering and you need to set your mind up ahead. And the current things that are happening to you, God will use to bring you across the finish line of your faith with, with a, in a blaze of glory by the power and the authority of God. It, 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 he's encouraging them to move forward and past the current things. He goes on and he says, well, what I'd like to do is I'm going to take a, a moment and read a few scriptures. I'm going to read a few scriptures because I think it's important that I have that goal up ahead and I set it well. In Revelation 21, verse 2, it says, And I saw a holy city coming down from heaven of God, the holy city of Jerusalem, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In that holy city, the scripture teaches that we will be his people and he will be our God. You see, that's, that's long-term. That's a goal. That's something there. I want to be there. I want to be in that new Jerusalem. And if I want to be in that new Jerusalem, then maybe some of the choices that I make now are necessary. And, and, and I want to make the right choices now because I've got a long-term goal up ahead. I want to be in the holy city of God. I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning verse 24, it says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receiveth the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath. But we, an imperishable, 
So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one that beateth the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest that after preaching to others, I, may sh- I would disqualify myself. That they're all running a race, but, but man, the run, one that is going to win, they, they're looking up ahead and say, I'm going to cross that finish line. That's my goal. I've worked out a little bit, and there's been goals that I set. How much I want to bench press, what do I want to lift, you know, I'm at this certain age, but I still want to cross over this line. But you have to set goals for that. You, you, you have to, you know, plan and, and move forward in that to accomplish that goal. And if you're going to run the race of Christ, then you, you run that I'm going to win. I don't want to say, yeah, yeah, sign me up. I'll run the way, race. <laughs> I, I don't care if I come in last. I, I, I want to win. I, and, and that's what... Paul's encouraging that many run the race, but, but the disciplined ones, basically the ones that decide, you know, I'm going to make some right choices in my life, they're the ones that cross over. So he's encouraging the saints, I want you to cross over, gain the prize. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 5, it says, Now faith makes sure of what we hope for, convinces us of the existence of things we cannot see. For by it the people of old receive their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that which is seen was not made out of things that were visible, By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. Through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. We still talk about him. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleasing God. You see, these things I want to hold true in my life. I want to please God. I I want to finish well. I I want to believe that God has something up ahead and not just be convinced by what I see today. I, I, I believe and walk by faith of what's up ahead, whether I see it or not today. So your goal is is beyond the current moment. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosper, and then you'll have good success. Man, i got to remind myself of this. I truly want God's blessings. But I have found they don't just happen. That, that it is something you, you walk toward. It's something that you set as a goal. It's something that you, you practice. It's, it's within the choices you make. And it's definitely by the working of the Spirit of God in us. But these are practices. These are steps that, that God has encouraged you, take these steps. You know, what do you want in life? What do you want in life as a believer? Well, Lord, I want to finish well. Then, okay, these are the steps. I've lined them out. I've, I've given you all the authority and the help and, and, and placed my spirit inside you. But I've found that even though he's done all the work, He says, now what are you going to do? What direction are you going to go? And and don't we have those? I mean, there are times that I'm literally faced with that decision of what choice I'm going to make. On the one hand, whatever choice it is, it satisfies me right now. But on the other hand, it might be a little denying of self, taking up my cross following him 
but I know it's worth it. I know the goal at the end. So I want to start making those right choices, but with that long-term goal in mind. I also read in Revelation chapter 17, one of the seven angels who had the seven bulls came and said unto me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on the many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication with sexual immorality and with the wine of those sexual immorality the dwellers on the earth have become drunk and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness and I saw the woman sitting on scarlet this is John the disciple the apostle that God was purposely showing him these things not only for John's sake but for our sake and it says that he was sitting on a scarlet beast, was full of blasphemy, or blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and Jews, looked pretty on the outside, looked great, looked wonderful, and holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and with impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written the mystery Babylon, the great mother of prostitutes and the earth's abominations. It, it, it's, it's there for us to realize I also have to see the finish line of those that aren't following the Lord. Those that are walking the way of the world and doing their own thing. And sometimes that comes into perspective and I realize, man, Lord, I don't want to go there. You ever hear or seen like a brother who, who is not walking or a sister not walking with the Lord anymore? Or, or really, man, they, they got off. Or they, they got into some deep temptation and, and it kind of hurt their witness. And sometimes God shows us those things as a, as a realization of, man, that's not the road I want to travel. And there are these passages in Scripture that kind of show us that this is their finish line, but this doesn't have to be yours. And so I, I, I want to set the mark of the high calling before me. Lord, this is the direction I want to go. And now I want to make the right choices in life. Trusting in your spirit, relying on your redemption through your blood that was shed for me. But, but determined in my heart. Kind of like Daniel purposed in his heart that he wouldn't defile himself with the king's meat back in Daniel, the book of Daniel. Just to, to, to have that, that understanding in my heart. I want to go forward. You, you got many, Hebrews chapter 12, you see, that we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, people that have gone on in faith, and now they're in glory. And these things are written because it's like, I, I want to see me there. I want to see me at the throne of God, casting my crown at his feet, worshiping his name, singing in perfect pitch, having a, a voice that, that you'll die for. But to see myself there in glory and, and to be able to worship my God. Again, I press toward the mark, the high calling of Christ. But I know that, that i got to walk in the Spirit, as it says in Galatians 5, verse 6. I, I, I need to continue in the faith. I need to live right in my life and look for the joy that's up ahead. Though the season might be hard now, boy, doesn't the Scripture say joy comes in the morning? There is joy up ahead. Okay, Lord. By faith, I'm going to walk through this. I'm going to endure this season. I'm, I'm not going to give in to this temptation because I'm looking long term. And I'm relying on your spirit who's with me. Relying on your word. Relying on the work of the cross. 
But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It encourages us. So I need to start practicing those things that are, that are made for, for long-term results. And if you, if you look back in Peter where we were, it encourages us. It, it says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves, in verse 14, according to the former lust in your ignorance. Man, I, I, I want to I move on. I don't want to stall out in my faith. And, and too many people have kind of stalled in their faith. And, and, and they're like, what do I do? How, how, do, I, how do I go forward or get past this? And, in fact, in some times, in some situations, they've actually taken a couple steps backwards. And it's important to be like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set my, my, my goals up ahead. I'm going to set my mark on the high calling of Christ. I'm going to press toward that. I'm going to start doing some things in my life right now that are going to help me reach that goal. Again, it's constantly trusting in the work of the Lord in your life. But it's that determination. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go forward. Again, it says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, be you holy in all manner of conversation. The, the word conversation means behavior or, or actually lifestyle. That it, it's important that we allow ourselves to be holy in all conversation, in all lifestyle, in all obedience to Christ. And it says this in the next verse, because it is written, be you holy as for he is holy, or for I am holy, it says. The word holiness means here in the text more in morality, moral behavior. That it's basically to live right. To, to make right choices. That I want to be holy. I want to be morally upright. I want to I make the right choices in my life for his kingdom and his glory. And so here you're, you, you decide in your life, no, I'm going to make the right choice. I'm going to do the right thing in the situation. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And then as you read, it says, And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, past the time of the so or past um, the time of your sojourning here in fear, that I know that I'm going to stand before the Lord. And I want to make the right choice in my life because I know I'm going to give an account when I stand before him. And I want to be able to do the things that God would have me to do. And you're faced with that choice most every day. But there's a determination. No, I'm going to be holy. No, I'm going to live right. No, I'm going to make the right choice in this situation. And you know, it, it gets easier as you get older because you made a lot of bad choices. So it's like, eh, I've already done that. You know, kind of been there, done that. Not, I don't, not going to do that again. I'll make another choice. I'll go forward. For as much, it says, for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your father but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ the precious blood of Christ as of the lamb without blemish and without spot I realize that I am passing through this world 
And in this world that God's given me, I've been able to experience a lot of fun, a lot of blessings, a lot of joy. But I have found that when I make the right choices, I don't have the regrets. That when I decide that I, I want to start living for the kingdom of God, I get to enjoy life and also the blessing of serving others, of encouraging others and other brothers and sisters and sharing the gospel of my faith. And knowing that I'm going to stand before God and I want to say, Lord, I know that I, I did my best. I did what I could. I did, I did things for your kingdom. But I'm grateful that you shed your blood to forgive me of my mistakes. I am grateful that you covered me through your blood and kept my feet going forward in the faith. And so, Lord, I'm going to continue on in the faith. And he goes on and it says, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. And it's basically, God, you have shown us over these years how you have redeemed us, how you have saved us. And Lord, at this time, I want to put my trust back in you. I, I don't want to trust in myself to cross the finish line. I want to trust you to get me across it. And so you put yourself, you put your trust back in God. God, thank you. I had a rough couple of years. I had a rough season. There was a shakeup. There was a disturbance. There was an attack. But Lord, I, you got my mind looking forward. I'm looking toward the finish line. I'm looking toward the end. I'm looking toward being in glory. And Lord, I want to I wanna run this race well. And so I'm going to trust you to get me through, to cross me over. And then he gives us this in these next verses, which are really great. Let me read them to you. In verse 22 and 23, it says, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, seeing that love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That understanding of purifying your souls, it has to be done by the Holy Spirit. But it has the concept that if you want to be morally pure, then live a moral life. Do moral things. If you, if you, if you want to be morally pure, then, then live that kind of life. Make those kind of choices. Realize that, that i got to trust God to, to, to cross that line, but, but it's only by the hand of God. It, it's only going to be, you know, it's basically, if I want to, to if I want to be healthy, i gotta, I got to eat healthy. i got to kind of live healthy. i got to make healthy choices in my life. But I hear people say, well, yeah, Kirk, I, I, I want a healthy life, but I kind of want to sit on the couch, eat a lot of chips and dip, and, oh, yeah, a ton of donuts. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's going to work. That, that'll probably do it. You're probably on the right track for that. And it, it's not going to do it. You've got you to make certain decisions in your life. I've got I to make certain decisions in my spiritual life. I kind of want to have a healthy spiritual life. So I make right choices in that situation. I make the right decisions to go forward. And, and, and I stumble along the way. Let me tell you something. I usually don't pass up ho-hos or ding-dongs when they're out. I just don't. They're good. I, I wish they had more filling in them. Why don't they make double stuffed ding dongs? They make double stuffed Oreos. They make triple. Do you know they make? Tri I'm getting off. They make triple stuffed Oreos. 
They do. But I realize I have the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ who shed his blood for me that covers all my sin, who sent his Holy Spirit to help me to be holy as he is holy. But you see, the determination is, Lord, that's the direction I want to go. And then he says, okay, then, then now do something. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, he says right in verse 22, having purified your souls in the obeying of the truth. Man, start following what the Word of God says. Through the Spirit unto the unfeigned love of the brethren. Start loving the brothers and sisters around you. Go out of your way. Help them. Encourage them in the faith. Fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Start making the right choices. That I, I want to be plugged in. I want to be plugged into a church. I want to be plugged into the Word of God. I want to make sure that our family helps other families. I want to be connected with the body of Christ. I want to go forward in the things of the Lord. I, I want to make the right choices because my goal is to cross the finish line of faith. And so you start putting those things in order, and all of a sudden you find your life just catapulted forward in the faith, still enjoying the life God's given you, but with, a, like I said, no regrets, but with, with a purpose and a goal and an end result. And so he encourages us, man, come together, love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as the grass, and all the glory of men as the flower of the grass. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, and falleth away. But the word of God endureth forever. And this is the word of God by the gospel which is preached unto you. That man, the glory of man of what you see, the glory of maybe some of your friends or, or people in the, in, in the spotlight, the glory of the world and, and, and the things that it wants to give you, those things are going to pass. But there are some things that are going to last forever and ever. The promises of God, the blessings of God, and it's those things that I want to chase after. Because they're going to last. You know, growing up, uh, not having a lot of money, I, I would buy a lot of cheap stuff, but I realized it's better that I save for something of better quality than spend four times on the same item of lesser quality. That sometimes it's worth the effort to buy something a little better. And it's definitely worth the effort to make the choices for what God has for your life. And I want to encourage you, God has something wonderful for your life. And I encourage us all, let's, let's run the race to get that. Let's, let's chase after that. And what's so cool is we got brothers and sisters to help us along. So if I'm running the race and I trip and fall down, I encourage you, grab my arm, lift me up, get my feet going in the right direction, and if you happen to trip up, I'll grab your arm. And together, by the Spirit of God, we're going to cross over that finish line of our faith. So, Father, thank you for giving us this time to look in your word, to see the scriptures, to understand the things that you have for us. And our heart, Lord, is to finish well. And we're so grateful that you sent your Spirit to accomplish that, You've given us promises in your word, and your word endureth forever. And we thank you that you started the whole process when you came and you died for us on the cross. And we can ask you to forgive us of our sin and be our Lord and Savior. And that your precious work on the cross continues to cleanse us from the stumblings we've had in life and those up ahead but our heart is to finish well, Lord. So we look to you once again, the author and finisher of our faith, to get us across. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.